Hi, I'm Colin and this is the Action Figure Resource Video Channel. The place for all your action figure news, reviews, tutorials and guides. I hope you find the information here interesting and informative and that it helps you with your collection. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon in order to be informed on all my future videos. Okay, now let's get on with today's video. In 1972, Mega released a line of the world's greatest superheroes. These were produced between 1972 and Mego's demise in 1982. And over the period of 10 years, they released a total of 37 different figures. Series 1 was released in 1972 and had four different characters, Superman, Batman, Robin and Aquaman. The figures were originally released in solid boxes. However, they got a lot of complaints from retailers because the kids would open the boxes to take a look at the figures inside. As a result, they were shortly replaced by window boxes. Later on, they also released the figures on blister pack credit card. As a result, solid box figures are very difficult and rare to get hold of. The original Batman was also released with a removable cowl and cloth mittens. Around 1974, these were replaced with moulded and painted mittens and cowl due to the fact that they got lost so easily. The original Batman head skull came with white pinpoint pupils in the centre of Batman's eye. Around about 1974, an exclusive Bruce Wayne figure was released as part of Mingo's secret identity figures, which were exclusively made for the Montgomery Ward catalogue. The exclusive Bruce Wayne figure had the same head sculpt as the original Batman, but there was no white pupil in the centre of his eyes, and there was no copyright on the back of the neck. The same head sculpt was also used for Tex Willer, Mystery Man and Jet Jungle. Mego distributed this line of figures around the world. In Italy, they were distributed by Harbour, Tintin Toys in France, Palatoy in the UK. By far the hardest figure to get hold of is the Peruvian Batman figure. Mint Batman in solid boxes sells for around $800 $1,200 on the secondary market. The window box figure only goes for around $400. And last but not least, you have the Crash Blister Pack figures, which sell for between two to $300 mint on the card. The next figure we're gonna look at is the Batman Bend and Flex figure. The Bend and Flex line was released in 1974 and this line included all the figures from the world's greatest superheroes line. They were five inches tall and were very cheap, cheerful and cartoony figures and they were extremely popular with kids and collectors. They were probably too popular and they didn't last long before Mego cancelled the line. This was probably through fear that they were cannibalizing the sales of the larger 8-inch figures. These were also initially released in display boxes, but were later replaced with crash cards. The figures were released on three different types of blister cards. There was a large blister card that was about the same size as the regular size figure. Then they replaced these with smaller cards that were more fitting to the size of the figures. Then lastly, there was an even smaller card, which was the crash card. Mint on the card, these figures sell for between $100 to $200, and loose for about $50. The hardest figure by far to find in the Bend and Flex line is the Riddler figure. Mint on the card, this figure sells for between $100 to $150. Loose, he goes for about $30 to 
fifteen dollar. Between 1976 and 1982, Mega released a line of comic action hero figures that were about three and a half inches tall. There were 12 of these figures released in total. The sculpting was very poor and didn't resemble the characters too much. However, that said, they were popular with the kids. The figures were produced in a slightly crouching motion so that they could fit into the vehicles that were produced. There were three vehicles produced for the Batman figure. There was the Batmobile, the Batcopter, and a Batcycle. The Batmobile in this set was released with three figures, Batman, Robin, and Superman. I'm not sure why they decided to go with Superman instead of producing a Joker or the Riddler to go with Batman and Robin. These figures were also produced and distributed worldwide. In Canada, they were distributed by Grand Toys. In Germany, they were distributed by MC Toys and Dennis Fisher in the UK. Each produced them on different packaging. In 1979, Mego re-released the comic action heroes figures as the Pocket Superheroes line. This line included all the figures from the previous comic action heroes line on red backing cards. They were later re-released in 1979 on white cards. All the previous figures that were on the red backing cards were also on the white backing cards, but there was an addition of four characters, Captain America, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and the Green Goblin. The red carded figures are the easiest ones to find, with the white carded ones being slightly more difficult. The hardest figures on the white card to find is Batman and Superman. Around 1980, they were released on what's commonly known as the Blue Jean backing card. These are very difficult to find and are by far the hardest line to collect and to complete. In Canada, only the four main characters were released on a Grand Toys card, sell for between $100 and $100. $50. But loose they sell for around $30 to $50 a piece. In 1979, Mega released a line of four diecast figures. The characters in this line were the Hulk, Superman, Batman, and Robin. These figures were released both in Europe and the USA. A line of magnetic figures were produced by a company called Gig and were only distributed in Italy. These figures were exactly the same as the diecast figures, but with magnets in the hands and feet. As a result, these figures are very difficult to find mint in the box. The Batman figure in the diecast set came with a cloth cape, whereas the Italian magnetic Batman had a plastic cape that was modified from the Micronaut Emperor. The magnetic mint in the box figures now sell for between $300 to $500, whereas the diecast figures go for about $200. The diecast figures were packaged as special collector's limited edition figures. As a result, many collectors kept these in their boxes and are therefore generally fairly easy to find, still mint in the box. In 1974, Mega released a line of super softy figures. These came in two sizes, an 18 inch not non-talking super softy and a 22 inch talking super softy. There were four characters released in this line, the Lone Ranger, Batman, Robin, and Superman. In 1978, Mega released a line of super-sized superheroes. 
This line were 12 inches tall and modelled on the magnetic figure. There were three different types of the Batman figure released. There was a magnetic one, a non-magnetic, and a foreign issue figure. In 1978, Mego also released a line of elastic figures, which were produced to compete with Kenner's Stretch Armstrong figure. These figures proved to be extremely popular. However, Mego had big problems because the majority of the figures ruptured and were poorly made and had to be returned. There were five characters released in this line. Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, The Hulk, and Plastic Man. These sell on the secondary market for around the $150 mark. Okay, that's it for today. Don't forget to check out my video on the Mego Batman playsets and vehicles, and also to check the other Batman videos on this playlist. And don't forget to download your free Batman action figure collector's guide. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video informative and interesting. Don't forget to subscribe below, hit the bell icon, and comment to let me know which of these figures is your favorite or which you would like to buy. Until next time, take care. Bye for now. ActionFigureResource.com Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures.